Hello guys, so this is uh, Thara's day lecture. So this will, lecture will be uh, recorded in two videos asynchronously. So I will just publish the video then tomorrow on Thara's day, you know, you just watch the lecture offline in, at any time you want, okay? Uh, so as I said, this lecture will be in two videos. The first video, I will ex uh, I will solve some example that is really, you know, a little bit difficult. I struggle in it myself. And uh, the second video will be uh, on another com amplifier configuration, which is common base. So we still on common emitter. I published these three assignments for you, three homeworks, uh, you know, uh, similar to the uh, circuits that I solved in the lectures. Okay. Uh, and, you know, this example is also, you know, a, a continuation in our common emitter uh, study. Okay. So uh, the differences between the circuits that we saw so far is that we change, uh, you know, the way of biasing. This is one type of one change. Another change is the addition of the emitter resistance, which we call the degeneration re resistance. Uh, and we know that adding this resistance, you know, makes your circuits uh, circuit more stable uh, or more immune uh, against the change in beta due to the temperature change. Okay. Uh, in this example that you see in your screen now, okay, is uh, another amplifier. You know, it's also common emitter because the input is near the base and the output is near the collector. Uh, but the, the biasing now is using what's called feedback uh, resistance from collector to uh, the base. So VCC or this, in, I'm sorry, this in this circuit here, the current, the, you know, the, the current source, the, the DC current source, are uh, which is basically in the collector side, will also bias the transistor from the base side because of the this resistance here. Let's call it RB which is connecting the collector to the base, okay? Uh, in this example, as we see, our signal is zero. So no our signal here. Which is good because it's complicating usually our examples. This is from the, you know, problem solving side, but from practical side, our signal has, uh, a bad effect in which some of the input signal, the real voltage that you want to amplify, actually dropped on it. So we need, you know, very high input resistance in our uh, amplifier circuits uh, so that we can, you know, grasp most of that input signal and amplify it. And we saw that that's not easy, okay, to achieve. The common emitter amplifier, the, the configurations that we are studying right now are actually bad on that it has usually low input resistance, okay? Good. So what, what we have here, we have an amplifier, we have a common emitter amplifier, the input is near uh, uh, the base, the output is near the collector, here's the output, okay, VO. Uh, and we have a current source used for biasing. And we have this degener degeneration resistance, you know, to make our amplification gain stable. Now let's uh, see how to solve this, okay? Uh, this example is actually example uh, 149 from, uh, problem 149 from uh, Cedra's book. It's a really a uh, good book in that, in that, uh, in that uh, part of the course. So uh, beta here is 100, so beta here is 100 for that transistor, let's call this RE. Okay, this is, let's call also this RL. Uh, first find the DC collector current and the DC uh, voltage at the collector. So this is the first requirement. So before we go forward in the DC analysis to find uh, IC, like what he asked for, and also VC, let's first mark the currents. Where are the currents? Okay. So this is basically, so in DC, let's draw the circuit in DC. So in DC, so in DC analysis, number one, in DC analysis, uh, 
as we always say, cancel uh, the EC sources. So we're gonna basically short the input. And number two, all capacitors are open. Okay. This infinity here, by the way, means just to make you convenient with, uh, with the symbols, means it's a high capacitance. Okay. So in EC, uh, uh, the impedance of the capacitor is very low. Uh, we consider it zero. Okay. Good. So let's draw the circuit. So uh, after after making these two, applying these two, uh, you know, steps. So we're gonna have the AC source, the transistor, then RE. And here is one milliampere. Then we have this resistor here. And since it's, this is open circuit, this capacitor is open circuit, then, you know, just remove this input part. And again, since this is also is, is open circuit, this capacitor, so just remove RL. Now, where is IB? And so IB is basically the current flowing into the base. Where is IC? IC is the current flowing into the collector. Ah, I'm sorry. Here, IC. So here is IB, here is IC. And also to make you convenient, what does this stand for? It stands for that this, uh, for example, current source are connected to some high voltage, but we don't care about it. We will not need this value. We don't need to know what kind of voltage it's connected to, okay? So it's unknown, but we will not need it. And it will not affect our uh, our solution. Okay, so let's now solve this. I'm beta is 100. So let's now solve this. And this is two RB, two kilo, 200 kilo ohms. RE is, let's write it as in kilo ohm in that way. 2.225. So, as we can see with this DC circuit, one milliampere equal to, at that node here, one milliampere is equal to IC plus IB. Okay. And what's IC and IB, it's actually IE, right? It's actually IE. So we get IE now, okay? Usually in the, uh, in the, you know, in the amplifier circuits, we usually consider beta very high, okay? And it's actually very high. So always assume and I will let you know this in the exam, for example, or in assignment. Like the, if you check the assignment, I always assume that beta is very high, so alpha is approximately equal to one. So since beta is much larger than one, uh, so IC approximately equal to IE, equal to uh, one milliampere. Of course, you can solve it using the exact solution. It's up to you. But uh, this will make our numbers even better, as, as we will see now, okay? So always assume that, and I will let you know. So don't worry about that. And again, if you want to solve it exact solution, that's fine. So with the exact solution, IC is beta IB. So uh, beta IB plus IB will be equal to beta plus one IB equal to one milliampere. Beta is known, so IB is known. Then you can solve IC and IE. But we don't need all of that. Okay, good, we get IC. Now it's required the VC, the, uh, the voltage at the collector here. Okay, let's now first get the voltage at the base, V base. So this is number one. 
number two now. V base is equal to, the voltage at that point is equal to VBE plus IERE. So this is equal to 0.7 plus IE, something very weird here happening. So VB equal to uh, 0.7 plus IE, RE. IE is known, RE is also known, it's a given. So this will be equal to um, 0.925 volt. Okay. Now VC is equal, let's select a look at V. This is VC. So it's equal to VB, the voltage at that point, plus the voltage drop across RB. Remember the current is flowing from up to down, so the voltage is from bottom to up. So uh, VC is the voltage uh, of the resistor RB plus VB, the voltage at that point. Okay, so this is equal to VB plus IB RB. Okay. And the IB can be gotten from here. So IB is equal to IC over beta. Okay. So plus IB, IB is IC over beta. So one milliampere over 100 multiplied by 200. And that's why I'm using, I always, I always assume that beta is very high. So, and it's very high. So alpha is equal to one, approximately equal to one. So this will, if, if you didn't consider this, this will be 101, by the way. Okay, it will be one milliampere over 101. You can solve it, you know, with exact solution and you will see this. And with, this will give us, you know, give us some, you know, uh, bad numbers, I can say, okay. So if you, uh, if you compensate for this, it will be uh, 2.925. The exact solution is 2.905, but plus some other numbers, you know. I just, you know, truncated it at, uh, after the third digit. This is numbers. Okay. So this is actually what's uh, required for part one, which is finding uh, the DC collector current and the DC uh, voltage at the collector. So this is done now. Okay, this is number A. Now, uh, replacing the transistor by its hybrid by model, okay, draw the small signal equivalent circuit of the amplifier. Now we will go to the AC part. And the, in the AC part, you usually have, we usually need the GM, the transconductance and R by, okay? So, and you know, R by and GM is as, uh, actually calculated from the DC solution. So before going forward, let's calculate them. So, so GM is equal to IC over beta, I'm sorry, over VT. And VT is always assumed 25 millivolts. And I will let you know in the exam, either to use 25 or 26, because some books use 26, okay? Good, so IC is one milliampere over 25. If you use the exact solution, you know, if you didn't uh, consider that beta is e alpha is equal to one approximately, it will be an ugly number. But with this, it will be a nice number, which is exactly 40 milli ohm minus one. And again, usually use GM in, in, uh, in milli ohm minus one, because it's usually will be multiplied by a resistor and the resistors are usually in kilo ohms. So milli will go with kilo. It will be more convenient for you. VT, I'm sorry, uh, now R by is equal to VT over IB, VT over uh, IC over beta, oh, sorry here again, IC over beta, so beta in the denominator of the denominator, so it will be in the numerator, okay? So this will be 25 multiplied by 100 over one milliampere. Again, if you use the exact solution, it will be an ugly number, okay? So this will be 2.5 kilo ohms. Okay, now we can go to the AC analysis 
you know, with ease because we calculated what we what we need g m and r bar. So it's so in B, it's just asking for replacing the transistor by its hybrid by model. It's PC equivalent circuit. You know, that's it. So let's do that. So let's write here. Number B. So I will do the uh, circuit of the transistor itself by a different color. So we need, we know, guys. Which is which? Beta IB. If you want to use GMV by, that's very fine. It will be the same, exactly the same, R by. And remember, the current that flows in R by is IB, this current here. And this is IC here. This is IC, which is beta IB, of course. This is the base. This is the collector. And this is the emitter. Now, continue the other part of the circuits. Good. Before that, let's remind ourselves what are the steps to use to follow in AC to draw the AC equivalent circuit of an amplifier. So number one, let's write them back in red. Number one, uh, cancel the DC sources. In our example, we have a current source, DC current source. So the current source will be open. So the current source here will be open. Number two, capacitors will be shorted. So let's do that on the side here. So, so here is the, the transistor. So RE, no change here. Then from the collector we have, this will be shorted. So, uh, sorry, this will be shorted. So we have our L. This will be open, so just to forget about it. Then we have RB. Then again, short here. Now no short because we are in the AC mode now. So short, then V input. Okay, and that's it. That's it. So let's before we go forward, let's you know mark this and take it a little bit to the left. Okay, now let's continue the other parts of the circuits for the circuit. Just look at here. This is a base, this is the collector and here is the emitter. So between the emitter and the ground, there is RE. Uh, but now for the collector, so this is finished market. Now between the collector and the ground, there are two branches. There is this branch and this branch. So we have our L and the ground. And now, so our market, now between the other branches RB and it's connected to the base. So the, for the first time, you will see something between the collector and the base. So here is RB. Okay. Now for the base, we already connected this branch because it's, it's share, shared with, with the collector or connected to the collector. Then we have the other branch here, the input between the base and the ground. Okay, very nice. Now let's solve this circuit. It was hard for me, I, by the way. It was it that easy. So let's do C now. So in C, let's check what, what's required in C. So we finished B. 
and C analyze the resulting small signal equivalent circuit to determine the voltage gain AV. Okay, so let's do that. Number C. So AV is required here. AV, before we continue, uh, AV is VO over V input. Remember here there is no R signal, so V input is equal to V signal. The R signal is zero. Where is VO? VO is here. This is VO. And here is V input, which is V signal at the same time, between this point and the ground, you know, this source. So maybe somebody will, will call me a, so let's, maybe someone will consider V input on, on just R by, no, it's between this point and the ground. So let's keep it with a source here, not to confuse you, okay? Okay. So first, from this loop, this loop has the input R by and R e. From this loop here, we have the input equal to I b R by the voltage across R by plus the voltage across RE, which is equal to that current multiplied by RE. What is that current? Sorry, this current is beta IB plus IB, which is beta plus one IB. It's actually IE, and IE is equal to beta plus one IB. So beta plus one IB RE. Okay. Okay, that's good. So this is number one. Uh, yeah, from this, we can say that IB is equal to, I will show you why I need this. So IB is equal to, IB can be a common factor on the right-hand side. So IB is equal to V input over R by plus beta plus one RE. Call this number one. Okay, now, In the other, uh, you know, example that we saw, that we saw before, or even the homework, usually the output is equal to uh, IC or, or beta IB uh, multiplied by RL, you know, parallel RC or whatever. So it's usually easy, but now no, because IB is beta uh, IC or beta IB is in that branch. So we don't know the current here. So let's call it IO. And we also don't know the current through R T. Let's call it I. So let's check that node, KCL at that node. Let's do KCL there. So I equal to beta IB plus IO. Remember, in the AC analysis, usually we determine our unknowns, like for example, AV or input or whatever, as a, as a function of circuit parameters. You know, the resistances are by and GM. So we always want to, you know, uh, eliminate IB or, G or, or V by, you know, if you use GM V by instead of beta IB. Okay, what is I? I is a current flowing in RB, so it's it's equal to this node minus this node, the voltage at that node, I mean, I'm sorry, minus the voltage at that node, the other node here, over RB. The voltage at that node is V input. So this is V input minus, oh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's really weird. So the voltage at that node is V input, the voltage at that node is V output. So this is minus V output. Over RB. Equal to beta IB, leave it alone, plus IO. IO is flowing in the RL. So it's equal to this point, minus zero over RL. Or it's just equal to VO over RL. So VO over RL. Remember, AV is V output over V input. So we need an equation 
that has only VO and B input as unknowns. So we can divide by one of them, then we can get IB, uh, AV. And we must eliminate IB. And that's what we'll do now. So you can now remove IB and put its equivalent, V input over this. So if we do that, let's divide, you know, so let's continue here. So V input over RB minus VO over RB, we can write it in that way. Beta IB is actually beta V input over R by plus beta plus one RE plus VO over RE. Look, this, this is only a function of VO, V input and all other circuit parameters and we eliminate the IB. You may say it's one equation in two unknowns, yeah. But remember we need the, the, uh, the, div the division between VO and V input. Okay, we need the ratio AV. Good. So one thing you can do here, you can divide by, by beta here in that, in that term. So let's do that. So this will be equal to VI R by over beta plus beta plus one over beta RE plus VO over RE. Okay. And you can again consider beta plus one over beta approximately equal to one. Okay. So you can just, you know, so VI over RB minus VO over RB equal to VI over R by over beta plus RE plus VO over RE. Okay. Now you can calculate, uh, remember RB is known, 200 kilo ohms. Uh, R by is known, it's 2.5 kilo ohms here. Uh, beta is known 100. R E is known 2.225. So we can just, you know, uh, find a relation between uh, VO and... So if we divide, for example, uh, over VI in this equation, you will find that VO over VI, which is EV equal to exactly minus 79.9 over 11. That's why I usually neglect uh, or assume always that alpha equal to one or beta plus one approximately equal to beta to get some you know, integer numbers like this. So this will be minus 72.63. Okay, so we also did number three. Okay. That was uh, that specific uh, problem was was hard for me in the first time. Why? Because I'm sorry, this is minus, not not positive. This is, yeah, minus. Yeah, because uh, you see here in the this equation, there is subtraction. So whenever I see uh, an equation which has resistances in it with minus, I usually get scared because you know remember. Uh, Assistances must be, must not be you know negative, but that's you know for common emitter. Remember that the output and the input are out of phase, so there must be a negative a negative not uh, you know negative uh, terms in your in your solution. So that V O over V input will be negative at the end for common emitter. Okay. So that's why you know I I was skeptical uh, when I first solve it until I saw the, of course, the, you know, the solution manual and, and become more confident about my solution. Okay, and just realize it that yes, we must have some negative numbers, okay? Okay, guys, so this was uh, another uh, example for common emitter and see you in the next video with the common base uh, amplifier. Bye-bye.